he withheld nothing. He withheld nothing. Everything he has, he gives to you. Everything he has. He offers it to you. It's up to us to take a hold of it. You understand what I'm saying this morning? It's up to us to take a hold to the promises and the blessings of the Lord. I've been preaching for a couple weeks now about how you matter and how other people matter. And that's a blessing in itself. But this morning we're going we're to talk about what the name of this church is. The abundant life. The abundant life. I believe we have forgotten who we are in Christ Jesus. We have forgotten who we are. And we are letting the enemy trample all over us. And we cannot stand for it any longer. Amen? Amen? So look, this morning, first of all, I want to say, me and my wife actually want to say thank you to everyone that uh, participated in, in our uh, pastor appreciation. Look, the gifts, the cards, everything. Look, we, we read every card. We save every card. And, and I want you to know it means a lot to us that you care that much about us. It's an honor to serve this church uh, me and my family are blessed to serve it. Amen. And uh, we just want to say thank you for everything that you, uh, you've done. And, and, and some of you don't just do it on Sunday. You do it throughout the year. And we appreciate that. We appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot to us. Amen. You want to say anything, baby? Look at that. I'm blessed. <laughs> I'm blessed. Well, look, on the heels of that, we're going we're gonna to read this. Look at that. Somebody, somebody thought tithing off when I said that. Look, Molly was the first one that thought that. <laughs> you know, we're going to read this morning. We're going to be in, in a familiar passage. John chapter 10. John chapter 10 is where we're going to be this morning. We're going we're gonna to start around verse 7 today and talk about this right here. Amen. How many of you excited today? Look, all of you, the fall back means you get an extra hour of sleep, right? So all y'all ought to be just chipper lipper this morning. I don't know if that's a word, but it's in my dictionary. Amen. Amen. Some people, I guess, didn't set the clock back. Is it a vacation holiday today? No? Okay. All right. All right. John chapter uh, 10, verse 7. We're going to read 7 through 10. Let me get back. I left my glass in my mouth. It says, Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. And I am the door. And if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come. That they may have life. And that they may have it more. Somebody say more. more. Abundantly. Father I thank you today for your word. I thank you Father that we are the sheep of your pastor. I thank you Father today that you have called us into your glory, God, into your kingdom, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you're using us right now for your kingdom's glory. I thank you, Father, today that you have called others into this house, Lord, to recognize who they are in Christ Jesus. Now, Father, I ask you today, do what you would do, Lord. Do it by your spirit this morning, Father. I ask you, God, to let not man be in any part of it, Lord, but I ask that it would all be the power of the Holy Spirit. So I ask you, Father, to anoint my lips to preach and teach your word. Word, anoint the ears to hear it and the hearts to receive it. I pray today, Father, that we would leave this house forever changed for Jesus Christ. Father, you said you, you came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. May we discover who we are in you and just what this means to us. Now, Father, we give you praise in all things. We give you glory and honor. It's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Can you give the Lord one more hand clap? Praise. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, you're blessed. You're blessed. Hallelujah. Now, I'm assuming this morning that uh, 
They didn't talk about Trail Hill. They didn't give you all the numbers about the soul. Oh, I, I didn't hear nobody scream for that, for Jesus. When 1,100 souls get saved in a month, somebody needs to give God praise for that right there. 1,100 souls either rededicated their life or know the Lord for the first time. And that is a celebration. Amen. That's a celebration. Celebration time. I almost broke out in the Cooling the Game song right there. See, they, everybody that laughed is my age or older. <laughs> everybody didn't laugh like who was Cooling the Game. Amen. But look, I, as I've been studying and preparing this week and, and you know, abundant life. What does abundant life mean? And, and man, I was thinking about that. The church is the abundant life. And I felt like God just put something before me that would go right with this church in its name. And there are so many messages or sermons that we could pick just out of them four scriptures that I read right there. I mean, there's a lot in there. And so God has shown me some things in this, and I don't know how long we're going to stay in this right here, but we're going to stay in for a minute. But, but I'm going to do something a little different, I believe, this time, because I'm, we're having great attendance, but I, I'm wanting to push it to the next level. So instead of just doing uh, something every Sunday, I'm going to do it on Sundays and Wednesdays. So if you miss Wednesday, you ain't going to know what's going to happen from Sunday. So you, it, we're going to go into a little thing. We go Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday. Amen? Amen. So that way, if you're not here, you're going to say, well, what happened on Wednesday? I'm going to say, we should have been here. Should have been here. So don't miss a Sunday or Wednesday over the next, next couple of weeks. And if you need a ride or, and, 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 and on uh, Wednesday night, look, if you live within five miles, we will come pick you up. Man, that's for people on Facebook, too. If they need a ride and they watch us, we will come get them. Amen. We have a, a van. We prayed for a van around here, and God blessed us with a van, and now we're going to utilize that van. Amen. So I want to talk a little bit about something this morning. I want to talk about fake news. Fake news. And what better time to talk about fake news than when elections are going on? Man, there's so much fake junk going on on both sides. It's fake here and it's fake there. There's always fake news going on. But that's a whole other subject. But in John 10, 10, Jesus said in the, the latter part, I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. This is what God wants for our lives. His children, as well as being blood-bought believers, we are children of God. Now, if you're not a blood-bought believer, then guess what? You're not a, chill, a child of God. Amen, Pastor. Everybody is not children of God. Let me clarify that. You must be saved to be a child of God. Amen? Y'all had to excuse me for a moment. My little clip done come undone. I'm about to pull my ear off. Hallelujah. Let's try that right there. But you got to understand something. We serve a God of abundance. He is a God of plenty. Somebody needs to realize God has an unlimited resource. He never runs out. God is full of richness. God is a, a God with a lot of. He, he said that he is a God that gives it pressed down. He's a God that gives it running over. He gives it shaken together. Put into your bosom. For the, by the same as you use it, it'll be measured back to you. He is the giver of the abundant life. The giver of the abundant life. He gives an abundance on our spiritual condition. Oh, pastor, you don't understand. I don't feel so spiritual right now. In fact, I feel like I'm lacking in some area. Well, let me just get there in just a minute. Abundance in your relationship with others. Oh, God, I feel, uh, pastor, I feel like everybody I come in contact with, the relationship is just falling apart. Well, he's in abundance in our finances, too. Oh, there again, you, you missed it. You ain't seen my checking account or my, my savings account lately. He's, a, he's in abundance in our health. Oh, pastor, I've been sick a lot. My sinuses, my allergies. I don't feel like he's in abundance in my health. Well, he's abundance in our faith as well. Oh, no, I, I don't believe that either, pastor, because hey, I can't even believe that I could catch a cold right now. That's how much faith I lack. He's in abundance in everything. He's in abundance in our hope. He's in abundance in so many aspects of our spiritual and physical condition. Oh, got the wrong person this morning pastor no no beloved i don't he's a god of a whole lot of whatever you need if you believe him for it Amen. Amen. you must believe him for it 
If you're not believing him for it, then guess what? He is none of those things. He is none of those things. Regardless of what, what I say, if you don't believe it, then you can't receive it. So then he's a God of none of it. Even though I know he's a God of all of it. And this is what we're going to be talking about over the next couple of weeks, maybe just two days. I don't know yet. But God has put something here, and I believe if we can take this thing and grab it in our heart, grab it in our spirit, man, we can go to the next level with God, and we will be a blessed people as we are supposed to be. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that clap. I'm excited this morning because of what God's going to do. Because why? Because you're God's children. You're God's children. So the first part of that said, the thief come not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. So if you've been trying to get uh, to the abundant life in your walk with God, and if you've been wanting to overflow, as our slogan has been all year this year, and for some reason or another you keep missing it or, or it keeps uh, uh, bypassing you somehow, then we might need to remember the scripture. And we might need to remember or think about the first part. Thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. We need to recognize that there is an enemy lurking around whose desire is to keep you from receiving what God has promised you. There's an enemy that will do whatever he can to stop the blessings and the promises of God from flowing in your life. He doesn't want you to be happy. He doesn't want you to be prosperous. He wants you doing nothing but lacking and complaining. That's what he wants. All oh, pastors, this is very simple. Well, it must not be too simple because we are lacking in it. And sometimes we've got to jar our memory of some things. He wants you to stay defeated. Oh, yeah, he don't want you to have any joy in your life. He wants you to stay bound up to your past experiences. He wants you to stay addicted to those things that you've already been delivered from. He wants to keep putting them back before you where you'll jump back on. He wants you to stay on the edge all the time. He wants you to be lifeless and hopeless. That's what he wants. And how does he do that? Steal, kill, and destroy. It's his only task here on earth. There's no other purpose for him. This is the only thing. It doesn't matter how many promises he's told you. They're all lies anyway. I don't care what he's told you. It's a lie. It's a lie straight from the pits of hell. And no matter how many lies he throws at you, it's all he wants to do is to destroy you. To kill you. To, and look, that may not be in the physical, which it is, but sometimes to kill you spiritually where you're at. It's to, to, to stop your walk from where you're going. Oh, somebody's all full of joy for, for a month, and then something comes against them, and then they, they lose their joy. He's done robbed you of the joy that God gave you. Amen. Doesn't sound like a very nice person, does he? So why do we play with him? Why do we flirt with this guy? Why are people always messing around with him? Why is it we, we play a game with him that we cannot win with him? Look, oh, look, I know I'm an overcomer by the blood of Jesus. I know the devil has been defeated. But if I stay playing a game with him, I will not defeat him. I'm telling you, I'll be sucked back into his way of life, and I will be a defeated foe. I'm telling you right now, if you think that you have got it made because you're able to walk on both sides of the fence, let me tell you something, brother or sister. He has blinded you. He has put a covering over your eyes, and he has trapped you, and you are in a snare right now, and you are on your way to death and to destruction. And what part of your life do you really need him in anyway? Part of your life do you need him in? He can't do nothing for you. He can't do nothing for you. How would you like for him to live next door to you? Huh? How would you like that? Having to be worried if he's going to come over and steal from you because you always see him stealing from somebody else. Or knowing that he's killing people and, and he'd rather do nothing more than to come kill you. Yeah, he's destroying everything he touches in everybody's life. How would you like for him to be your neighbor? I don't think anybody in here would want somebody like that for a neighbor. Matter of fact, I'd pack up and move if I had somebody like that for a neighbor. But let me give you a little revelation this moment. 
For just a moment, think about this. It's sad to say it. But if we pay attention, we might find out not only is he living next door, but he's living inside our house. He's operating in and out of some of our homes right now. And we don't even realize it. And this is something you need to remember. He doesn't want to live next door. He wants to live indoor. He don't like living on the outside. He's going to do whatever he can to get on the inside. Because when he gets on the inside, he knows what's fixing to happen. He wants to uh, set up shop, so to speak, to start stealing everything that you have. I'm not talking about worldly possessions now. I'm talking about everything that, that you have inside of you. All of those things I've said. All of your joy. All of your peace. All of your happiness. All of your hope. All of these things. He wants to steal it from you. He wants you nothing more than to be dead. So I don't believe nobody wants the thief working in our life this morning, do we? Oh, if I said show your hands, everybody in here would raise their hand. You don't want something like that going on in your life or in your house, do you? No. So after talking about this, I want to talk about something called fake news. Fake news is, is something that a lot of people believe just started happening when the internet came around. But I, I want to read you what Wikipedia says about fake news. It says fake news is a type of yellow journalism that consists of deliberate misinformation or hoaxes spread via the traditional print, broadcasting news media, or via internet-based social media. Fake, snoo- uh, fake news is written and published with the intent to mislead in order to gain financially or politically, often when sensationalist, exaggerated, or patently false headlines that grab your attention. Fake news often employs eye-catching headlines or entirely fabricated news stories in order to increase readership and in the case of the internet-based stories, online sharing and internet click revenue. In the latter case, profit is made in a similar fashion to sensational online, something called clickbait. Headlines uh, that rely on advertising revenue generated from this activity, regardless of the veracity. Is that a word? No. V-E-R-A-C-I-T-Y. Veracity of the published stories. Easy access to online advertisement revenue, increased political polarization between the left and the right, and the... Lord, and popularity of online social media, primarily the Facebook news feed, have all been implicated in the spread of fake news. Anonymously hosted websites, slacking known publishers, have also been implicated because they make it difficult to prosecute sources of fake news for libel or slander. The relevance of fake news has experienced greater growth in a post-truth reality. In response, researchers have explored the development of a psychological vaccine to help people detect a fake news. Now look right here. Some fake news websites use website spoofing, structured to make visitors believe they are visiting trusted sources like ABC News, MSNBC, The New York Times defined fake news on the internet as fictitious articles deliberately fabricated to deceive readers, generally with the goal of profiting through clickbait. PolitiFact described fake news as fabricated content designed to fool readers and subsequently made viral through the internet to crowds that increase its dissemination. So what did I just say right there? I'd like to know myself. In layman terms, what I'm saying is people love fake news. Anything that we can grab a hold of, no matter how fake it is, the juicier it is, the better it is. We like to see it. Look, I've been on Facebook before, too, and I see something that says Fox News. I'm like, oh, that must have got to be real. It's Fox News. Click. And it's just as fake as the person that puts something on there that wasn't Fox News or ABC or MMC or whatever it is. It can be as dumb as dumb, and people just click on it, believing all the garbage and junk and making some liar who's making millions of dollars on advertisement. 
just by clicking on it. And it's all fake. It's bogus. It's a sham. It's a scam. And guess what? It's phony. So before you're on Facebook again and you click that, remember, 90% of what you're reading on there is fake. It's fake. So let me ask you something about fake news. Have you heard any lately? Have you heard any fake news lately? If you paid attention to the past or even current political uh, leader elections, you probably have heard a lot of fake news going on. But if you pay any attention to the elements that speak into your life and walk with God, you're probably also hearing some fake news that could be causing your faith in God to be keeping you from living the life more abundantly. From living in the overflow. Remember 1 John 4 1 tells us that we are to try or test the spirits to make sure they are of God. See, fake news is not a new thing, is it? It's been around for years and years and years, thousands of years to be exact, way back to the beginning of time. Genesis 3, verse 1. And now the serpent was more, and I think in New James, uh, King James says cunning. In the King James it says subtle, sneaky, clever, cunning, scheming, calculating. That's what it means. Then any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Look right here and it says, and he said, right there, fake news started right there. In Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 right there, it says, and, and he said, that's fake news. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have uh, God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, uh, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said, Here it goes again, fake news unto the woman, You shall not surely die. So God says one thing, and the devil turns that thing into something else. It's important to know what voice you're listening to today. Not only this morning, but every day. I think it is important to discern these things. Look, if you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you need to pray for discernment. You need to pray for discernment these things. Because one of them is speaking truth, and the other one is speaking fake news. One is speaking eternal life into you. The other one is speaking internal destruction into you. One is speaking the overflow into your life. And the other one is trying to dam up the river that's trying to flow through it. One is speaking life more abundantly. And the other is speaking killing, stealing, and destroying of all your hopes and all your dreams. So what voice are you listening to? Even in the small things. Verse 5 of, of Genesis 3 says, For God doth, doth know that in the day that you eat of thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, we're not going to get into who done what. All right? All the women looking like, even I didn't go there. <laughs> All them men are nudging, saying, he's going to, I'm not going to. See, he's been at this for a long time. He's been doing this before he ever met you, before you ever came out of your mama's womb. He was already spreading lies. He lied to Eve in the garden, and he's still lying now. He actually tricked her and Adam both into losing their relationship with the Father. The preeminence with him. And as a result of their sin, they were subject to death, disease, and the hardships of life. One lie of the enemy changed the outcome of their life forever. And it changed ours too. It changed ours too. They were living in paradise. They were living, they didn't have to work hard. Man, praise God. How many don't want to work hard? Didn't have to want to work hard. They, they had everything on the, uh, the silver platter, so to speak. Or, or I like to say it, they was living all hunky-dory. Just living the life. But when the thief got through with them, they were living by the sweat of their brow. Among the thorns and the thistles. If you want to know where sickness and disease, some of it comes from. Hunger and pain and all these things, suffering. You can go right back to right here. This is where it started at. 
And it happened all because the thief took from them what God had prepared for them. What God had already given them, they took it back. And what's crazy was they almost done it willingly. They did it almost willingly. So you don't even realize sometimes that you're giving ear to what you're giving ear to. And the next thing you know, you just stepped over and you're like, how did I even get here? And you did it willingly and didn't even know it. I wonder what would have been different if when this serpent comes slithering around, if he'd had a sign around his neck that said, hey, I'm a liar. And everything I say is a liar. And I believe Eve would not have believed him, would she? Well, I hope she wouldn't have anyway. But he didn't. And as a result, things got really bad for these two individuals really quick. And that's why the New Testament tells us in John 10, 10, the thief does not come but to steal, kill, and destroy. But he says, I have come, they may have life, and they may have more money. John 10, 10, listen to this, is the sign around the devil's neck. Oh, you ain't hearing me. That's the sign around the devil's neck telling you that he's a liar, that he's a thief, that he's a killer, that he's a destroyer. All this is a, a flashing sign right here. So why would we Play with him. You're either going to have the thief talking into your life or you're going to have Jesus talking into your life. And it's up to you which voice you're going to listen to. But you need to know that depending on which voice that you decide to listen to, you're going to have two very different outcomes in your life. Either you're going to have your God-given blessings and abundance uh, that he has promised you, or you're going to have all that stolen from you. You're going to have all that spiritual death that's going to come into your life. All these things are happening. I don't know about you this morning, but I don't want to give ear to one thing that he has to say. I want it out of my life because I want to have the life that is more abundant. People can't figure out sometimes why in their life this is happening and, and this is going wrong and destruction just keeps on and every time I turn around it, it, it's something bad and, and all these things because it's fake news. The enemy's lying to you. There's a serpent speaking to people and he's telling you that God doesn't love you anymore. He's telling you probably before you even came to this church this morning. He don't care about you. If he didn't, you wouldn't be in the condition that you're in right now. And God doesn't really care about your life. Your life as long as, uh, uh, as, long as you just go and sit, then guess what? You're okay with God. That's a lie from the devil right there too. And that God wants to, to deliver you from the strongholds and addiction and bond, or he would have never put them on you. No, He's lying to somebody this morning. You've got to understand. He can't speak nothing but lies. God doesn't want to save you, deliver you. He tells people all the time, every day, everywhere, that God is not even listening to you. If he was listening, you wouldn't be like you are right now. But I think we need to push the fake news to the side. We got to push it out of our way and, and get our nose, so to speak, uh, right here into the good news. Into the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think there's way too much trouble right now in the church as a whole. Not just in this church, but in the church as a whole. To say, we're not living the abundant life. We're not living the abundant life. Why do church doors close? They're not living the abundant life. They're letting the enemy come in and speak lies into them. The abundant life is right now. Oh, but pastor, there's people unemployed. There's too much unemployed. There's too much sickness in the church. There's too much uh, marital problems in the church. There's even too much sin in the church. There's too many lies in the church. There's too much death in the church. See, a lie can sound like the truth if you don't know the difference. If you're doing it, is just listen to every news report on every channel, then guess what? You'll be very confused, won't you? Oh, you'll be confused to all ends. Well, the same extent in our spiritual walk. If we're listening to everything but God's voice, then we're going to be confused in our walk with the Lord. 
Daniel 11, uh, 32 says, such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. That's fake news. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. This is the abundant life he's talking about. Look, let me tell you something. You're either going to be corrupt by the flatteries of the devil or you're going to be strong uh, and do good exploits for God. 1 John 2, 22 said, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is Christ. If somebody tell you that Jesus is not the Christ, then guess what? That's the thief talking. That's the thief talking when someone says that. You've got to know the voice. Look at here. John 8, 44. I want you to look at this right here. Jesus is speaking to me. Jesus didn't have a problem telling somebody to hush when they weren't speaking the truth. Ye are your father. Now, he's talking to Peter. Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Jesus did not have one problem pointing his finger at the wrong voice in his life. And you shouldn't either. Don't give ear to those things. Well, look, when a Jehovah's Witness comes knocking at your door, don't give ear to it. Don't go tell them, come on in, let's talk about it. No, 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 no. I don't care what Bible they got in their hand. Don't give ear to those things. Don't give ear to those things anymore. Hmm. I didn't know it was going to be as hard this morning. Praise God. Well, might ought to end it, hadn't I? Come on up, Molly. James 4, 7 says this right here. Please, I meant to say please. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Pretty simple, isn't it? Pretty simple. God has so much in store for us, beloved. For us to get to the next level, we're going to have to start walking in the next level. And we can't walk in the next level if we're not listening to the things of God. If all we're doing is giving ear to the devil. Look, I saw it when we was doing this trail to hell. I think it was about two nights before it was to end. Man, people were pulling out, dropping like flies, so to speak. Pulling out of, of participating and helping. I saw people arguing and fighting. Why? Because the devil was coming in. He did not like what was happening. He did not like it. I tell you this because I know. I'm just saying, I know. God is taking us to another level. And as we go to that level... The enemy does not like what he's seeing. He does not like what he's hearing. And we need to be a, a people full of the Holy Spirit. Full of the Holy Spirit. Full of the Holy Spirit. We need to be a people that seeks and desires the baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, one of the greatest lies the devil tells in our day and time is that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not for today. That the second blessing of God is not for today. That that was back in the old, old time. That died out with the apostles. Let me read what Acts 2 says, though. 2 and 37 says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, What shall we do? Then Peter said, them, Repent. May every one of you uh, baptize in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, this, listen right here. Verse 39. For the promise. That's the promise. For the promise is unto you. And to who else? And to your children. And to who else? And to all. Oh, it didn't say it, it's going to stop when the apostles die. No, it said, and to all that are afar off. Even as many as the Lord God shall call. And with many other words did they testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this own toward generation. God wants to give you the greatest blessing you could ever have. Besides the gift of salvation, He wants to give you the Holy Spirit. But there's all kinds of voices. That are telling you it's not for today. Oh, Pastor, this is a spirit for the church. Doesn't matter, there's still people who don't believe in it here, even in this church. He's still giving it away, it sounds like to me, even as his many 
as the Lord our God should call. You know, I had somebody once tell me, he said, the Holy Ghost died out a long time ago. Huh. I said, well, that had to be a lie. And he said, why is that? I said, because you're looking at a man that's full of the Holy Ghost. You're looking at a man that's full of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something, beloved. A lie cannot have an effect on someone who knows the truth. You've got to be in the truth of God's word. So when the fake news comes, you say, no, no, no. They don't line up with the truth of God's word. They don't line up with the truth of God's word. I'm telling you this morning, the devil over the next few weeks and months is going to be lying to us. He's going to be lying to us. He doesn't want this church to go to the next level. A simple message. But you know why it's so simple? Because God did not make it complicated. He didn't make it complicated. He didn't want us to have to go, man, why is this so difficult? No. When you're in a place where you're all confused and everything's difficult, then guess what? It's probably not God directing you there. God does not bring confusion. So he makes it simple for us. This morning we're going to get ready to take communion. Guys, you can go ahead and and start handing that out. I want you to understand this morning now, if you have not received the Lord as your Savior, or you have backslidden and you, and you need to rededicate your life to the Lord, then, then you need to do that before you take of communion. The Bible says that he who drinks or eats of this in an unworthy manner drinks judgment or eats it unto their self. And you can find that in... Uh, 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six, 26, I think. And so I want you to understand what we're doing here this morning. So and we're going to hand this out. Now, if you don't know the Lord, are you backslidden from him? I, and you say, but, but Pastor, I want to partake. You go ahead and grab it. And then what we're going to do, we're going to say a prayer. And if, if you need the Lord, and that's what's fixing to happen right here, because I want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So we don't do it just to be doing something. We do it to remember what he's done for us. You know, we sang uh, sang that song this morning. Uh, He's mighty and he's worthy and he's all these things. But guess what? If he was none of those things, he's still worthy. Whether he's Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, it doesn't matter. He's still worthy to be praised. He's still worthy. Well, I don't know where you want to go this morning, but if you just sing a verse or two while they're handing this out, and then we'll take communion and have a time of prayer.